From the complexities of getting humans there and back, to obstacles in living on the red planet, today we look at problems with colonizing Mars. Number 11. Journey to Mars Physically speaking, space travel can take a major toll on the human body. Prolonged weightlessness and passing through the hazardous radiation of the Earth's surrounding Van Allen belt, which contains energetically charged particles held in orbit by the planet's magnetic sphere, can have detrimental effects. Currently, the longest a human has spent in space is 878 days by cosmonaut Gennady Padaka, with the longest consecutive space flight lasting 438 days as piloted by the cosmonaut Valery Polyakov. But NASA plans to shatter those records with a planned 1,100-day journey slated for 2028 at the soonest. This could result in the weakening of the bones and muscles of those aboard the spacecraft, along with the possibility of osteoporosis, cardiovascular complications, and even cancer if not properly accounted for. Number 10. Shuttle Obstacles There are many issues humans face in attempting to settle on Mars. But before we as a species ever reach that point, scientists must first tackle the problems faced in getting there. This begins with the spaceflight there. For the most part, engineers and astronomers have the technology to make the trip, with multiple robotic Mars missions being launched in the past two decades. However, cutting down on travel time is the chief focus of improvement as the current voyage can take anywhere between four and nine months, depending on the method and rockets used. However, certain experimental rockets have given scientists hope in bringing this time down to as little as two weeks. Perhaps an even larger obstacle will be the landing as the combination of relatively strong gravity and thin atmosphere makes safely docking a large heavy spacecraft incredibly difficult. A new form of landing systems different from any used on the moon or in any robotic mission to Mars will need to be developed before humans can safely reach the planet's surface. Number 9. Atmospheric Pressure The human body is conditioned to Earth's specific level of atmospheric pressure, and exceeding or dropping below this level of pressure can result in extremely dangerous results. Reaching a critically low point of pressure, referred to as the Armstrong limit, will cause water to boil at the normal temperature of humans, meaning exposed fluid like saliva, tears, urine, and even liquids within the lungs will boil too. Furthermore, breathable oxygen becomes impossible to sustain life for longer than just a few minutes. Atmospheric pressure at Earth's sea level is equal to 14.69 pounds of force per square inch, or PSI. In comparison, the Armstrong limit is just 0.906 PSI while Mars has an average atmospheric pressure much lower, at 0.087 psi. To combat this, pressure suits exist and have served high-altitude pilots since their inception in 1931 by USSR engineer C.N. Downs. But those looking to settle for a long-term stay on the Red Planet can't be expected to spend every waking minute inside one of these suits. In order to cultivate a settlement, habitable structures with pressure levels like those used on spacecraft would need to be erected to offset the difference in pressure from Earth and allow for residency on Mars. Number 8. Surface Gravity The gravity on Mars is approximately 38% of the Earth's, and as such, this could pose a serious issue for humans looking to live there for an extended period of time. Low-gravity environments, or microgravity as it's known scientifically, can have detrimental effects on the health of people. Initially, humans in microgravity will experience space adaption syndrome, also known as SAS, or space sickness, with symptoms that include vertigo, vomiting, headaches, nausea, lethargy, and overall malaise. This has been shown to occur in 45% of adults who have flown through space. However, this condition has never lasted beyond 72 hours. Once the body adjusts to the change in gravity, new hazards arise in the form of muscle atrophy and skeletal deterioration. Because of the weightlessness in space, human muscle tissue will begin to decrease in strength, stamina, performance, and connective tissue integrity as the natural weight of Earth's gravity is no longer around to keep them consistently toughened. Bone mass also decreases in these weightless conditions, and the human body becomes all-around weaker, losing 1% of bone mass per month in microgravity. Other side effects that occur in low-gravity states include eyesight problems, a decrease in red blood cells, problems balancing, weakening of the immune system, and slowing of the cardiovascular system. Mars does have a stronger gravity than that of open space. However, it is not known at this time if the difference is significant enough to avoid all these symptoms. Number 7. Freezing Temperatures the coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth was in Antarctica, at a remarkably low minus 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit. But this frigid climate isn't far from the norm of Mars, which has an average surface temperature ranging between minus 125 and 23 degrees Fahrenheit, 
depending on season and location. Just like on Earth, though, there are some extremes that can prove either comfortable or lethal for Earthlings. At the equator, Mars can reach a high temperature of 68 degrees Fahrenheit at noon, while the lowest condition at either pole can drop as low as minus 243 degrees Fahrenheit. Other methods of measuring temperature on the red planet include a soil estimate of 81 degrees Fahrenheit and a daytime air temperature of 95 degrees Fahrenheit, measured by the Viking Orbiter and the Spirit Rover, respectively. While certain technological developments might be made to allow humans to live through this planet's erratic temperature fluctuations, the reality is that Mars may prove too cold to last for extended periods of time, with such an unpredictable and dangerous climate. Number 6. Hydration Issues Looking at the surface of Mars, it's plain to see that at one time there was water on the now desolate planet. Two massive ice caps of permafrost stretch across the poles of either longitudinal end of Mars, and tests have shown that more frozen water exists below the red planet's surface. In fact, scientists believe there is so much water on the planet both under its surface and frozen in its ice caps, that were it to be melted, it could cover the entirety of the planet to a depth of 115 feet. Due to its atmospheric pressure level, though, it is impossible for a large body of water to exist on Mars in its current state. It's thought that there was a time billions of years ago in which the planet could have sustained microbial life forms, but today Mars is in a sub-freezing state and is extremely arid. But not all hope is lost, as scientists investigate the area beneath the surface in hopes of finding some sort of habitable environment. Number 5. Solar Duality As a further distance from the Sun than Earth, sunlight, which is an essential element in fostering the growth of most organisms and ecosystems, isn't quite as plentiful on Mars. The rust-colored planet receives just 43.3% of the sunlight that Earth does. The thin atmosphere of Mars doesn't help either as most of the heat and solar power that would reach the planet can't be contained in the same greenhouse warming effect that Earth experiences. At the same time, though, Mars has very little weather aside from dust storms and strong winds, allowing for near-constant solar irradiation. This would mean that, in theory, solar panels would be able to absorb power from the sun much more consistently than those on Earth. Scientists are still researching whether or not this strange duality of the Mars environment can lead to the ability to grow crops via insulated greenhouses. Number 4. Dust Storms Coated in brick-red deserts, Mars is plagued by dust storms that grow so large they can encompass the entirety of the planet. While large and imposing, however, these storms aren't quite as dangerous as some of the natural disasters that occur on Earth. The top speed of winds in the Martian dust storm have been clocked at 60 miles per hour, which is only a fraction of the wind speed produced in hurricanes on our planet. This goes back to the thin atmosphere of Mars, which keeps the intensity of these storms rather timid in comparison to tornadoes or hurricanes on Earth. The dust on Mars poses a different problem, though, in being electrostatic. It clings to surfaces as it's displaced by winds, and such a mineral coating could cause major complications for machinery necessary for colonizing Mars. Engineers will need to compensate for this danger before any usable technology can be developed for use on the red planet's surface. Number 3. Erratic Orbit one Earth year, as most may know, requires 365 days to orbit around the Sun. Mars, on the other hand, takes 687 days to complete its orbit at a speed of 24 kilometers per second. While Earth orbits at a near-circular pattern, Mars revolves in a more elliptical shape direction, with the shape of its orbit deviating further from a circle as time goes on. Because of this stark difference in orbit, seasons, temperatures, and solar exposure are much less consistent on Mars. If humans are to populate the red planet in any capacity, thorough mapping and planning for such drastic climate changes will need to be completed, and surviving those periods of time in which sunlight and temperature are at their lowest will be one of the biggest obstacles for humans to overcome in that regard. Number 2. Toxic Elements in addition to being a thin atmosphere responsible for a good portion of the obstacles listed in this video, Mars has an incredibly toxic atmosphere as well. The majority of it is composed of carbon dioxide, making up 95% of the atmosphere, with 3% nitrogen, 1.6% argon, and 0.4% containing a number of other elements, including small traces of oxygen, making up the remainder. The atmosphere isn't the only source of toxicity on Mars, though, as Martian soil is also extremely hazardous. Soil tests taken by rovers have found that high perchlorate compounds containing chlorine exist throughout the surface of Mars. The amount found is not only toxic to humans, but toxic to plants as well. Any vegetation attempting to be grown in such soil will most likely grow undersized, lacking oxidizing power in roots and accumulating the toxic elements within their leaves. Number 1. Terraform Troubles one of the most commonly referenced processes by scientists hoping to colonize Mars is terraforming. This concept would involve engineering the surface and climate of the planet to make it safe for habitation by humans, theoretically speaking. 
But to pull it off, such an ambitious endeavor would require a massive investment, both in terms of financing as well as natural resources. And with dissenting opinions on the amount of accessible CO2 on Mars, an integral ingredient in fostering a livable, breathable environment on the planet's surface, researchers aren't even sure if terraforming would be possible. Further technological advancements will need to be made before this concept can make the shift from science fiction to reality.